Five Podcast 970. What's wrong with regular intelligence? And welcome everyone to the MyMac.com podcast. Now, Gas is off having a good time, so I've kidnapped, no, 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 sorry, requested the presence of Carl Madden from the Mac and Forth podcast to talk about our favorite AI programs and using them while not only recording the show, but live streaming it on Facebook, because what could possibly go wrong with that? Um, as it turns out, nearly everything. Hmm. Whoops, come on. There we go. Hey, Carl. Hi. How you uh, doing? I'm okay. Thanks. And welcome. Welcome, Facebook. Yeah, he's Even doing though it live. No pressure. We are. No one's watching it either, which, as far as I can tell, but I, I'm I'm pressing on. I don't care. We have had Facebook. so... <laughs> we've had... Well, it's it's that thing that that Mark guy does. I, you may have heard of it. May, maybe not. It It was popular, like, you know, AOL back in the day. <laughs> back in the day we've had so many problems getting started today and uh I'm, I'm going off script a little bit here the um the biggest problems i think turned out to be mostly apple related with the way that that they do audio because when you add a new source of audio into like the the mix Apple automatically assumes, oh, that's what you want, and they just switch you to it and, and don't care if, if it screws up everything else. And it's been it's been a delightful 40 minutes or so hmm. trying to trying to get all that figured out. Um it has it has not been a fun thing to do. So yeah, weird shenanigans with audio. And this actually started, Carl, what, two, three days ago? Oh yes. Yeah, because last time I came on the show, my audio sounded terrible for whatever reason. And I think that was because I had a setting wrong in in the little StreamYard window thing. Hopefully it's fixed and it's fixed for this because we won't know until post. But um, Guy assures me it is. So if it isn't... It's, it's my fault. <laughs> he's no, it's that way, isn't it? He's the chat. Yeah, yeah it's... Mm. No, me. I had to point at myself. Can't point at Carl. Me. Uh, one of the other problems I was having, uh, Carl can see this, and if you watch the uh, the video later on, you'll be able to see that as well. This is the Motu M4, which is like a fantastic audio interface. It's clean. It does everything but wash the dishes for you um, until it doesn't, which is kind of what happened a couple of days ago. And what made me think that it's actually a problem with the Mac was... Uh, I pulled this out of the chain, and to absolutely no one's surprise, I have multiple audio interfaces. So I grabbed another one, uh, the Arturia Minifuse 2, plugged that in, and it seemed to be working fine. But the audio, other audio interface, because, you know, I can't just do one thing, um, started having problems as well when that was the Behringer UV1, a rack mounted. USB audio interface. And it's like, what is going on here? I mean, everything was just like all messed up. And I went into, yeah, you heard of audio MIDI setup in the utilities folder. Oh, you're asking me. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes. I've heard of it. Yes. Okay. When I looked in that, I had this long list of all of these different audio interfaces and stuff from road because road has lots of virtual stuff. And I don't know if it, if it's a problem with all of these things starting to bang heads, because you can't take them out. Once they're there, you can't take them out. Now, the loopback stuff, sure. You, If it's not there when your computer fires up, it just disappears. But stuff from Rode and, and stuff from, from a bunch of other companies that have that do some, some virtual uh, signaling or moving around of audio from, from place to place, once that's in there, it's like, nope, can't pull me out. Can't do it. So what I may end up having to do is one of two things. I'm either going to have to replace this Mac Mini, which I don't want to do yet, or do a uh, nuke and pave and just get rid of everything and start from scratch, which I really don't want to do either. Hmm. It would actually be easier to just get a new computer, but a little bit more expensive. You, you just want an M3. 
That's all it is. I, well, so, they're not out yet. I I can't. E- even well, if I'm even if that was like what I wanted to do, I'd have to go with an M2. And I with and I know the M3 is like probably right the around problem, the corner. The problem is, and I know you're a tinkerer because I yeah. know you. Right? Is the problem is because we do this nonsense every week, we um. We're constantly, any new thing that comes up, bang, we'll put it on our machine, see if we can use it. We'll put it on there. Yeah, it sounds great when you're just messing around, trying it in your bedroom with no one listening. And then yeah. you go onto a call and they go, oh, I can't hear you. And they, you go, <laughs> well, well, what have I changed? And then you think, crap, everything. I've changed everything. <laughs> <laughs> Where was it before? Just, and you know, I picture, I picture this, and this goes, this goes way back before digital switching. Some kind of telephone operator inside of inside of my Mac, frantically moving cables all over the place. Oh God, what is guy doing now? Oh, I can't keep up. So you know, that's that's the picture that's in that- my in my head. Um, so yeah, I might be having problems with the M1. I, it might just be I've got too many too many things that are 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 plugged in there which is it that's always possible um now and actually i'm i'm going to ask you this carl why don't you tell us what's going on with you and then together we'll kind of explain how this is going to work today cuz it's going to be a little convoluted yeah, but go ahead I'll- I'm waiting to find out myself. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I've just been up to work, 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 work. It's mad at our place at the moment. But uh, uh, anyway, but every now and again, I still find some time to play with my new Steam Deck, which I know nice. I've now made Guy go out and buy. He blamed me. Yeah, well, it was your fault. No, it wasn't. You, you, I said, whatever you do, don't impulse buy it. End of the conversation. Yeah, I got one ordered. So Yeah. yeah. Even before we got off that conversation. That's <laughs> And then he he realizes he's not very good at gaming. He yeah. has to get better. That's how you do that. Anyway, so um, yeah, I've been doing all that. So I've been playing with me uh, Steam Deck, and I'm a bit like guy. And, and I thought, oh, I tell you what, I could because um, I've in the past I bought all these various video equipment now because I, I wanted to do like video podcasts like this. Unfortunately, most of the other gang on my show don't want to do video podcasts, so I can't do them. Anyway, so um, I thought. Right, I could use the Steam Deck. I can start streaming Steam Deck games and maybe have some fun with that. So I set up OBS and I've got this little cam link thing to um to uh to work with the uh capturing the Steam Deck. And so yeah. and I'm playing with OBS and I'm rooting audio all over the place and whatnot. And my poor little Mac uh MacBook Air, first time I've seen it, is like the processing thing has gone up to about ninety five percent. What are you doing to me? <laughs> It's like so, you turn everything off, and it's like it sends you a little message saying, "You know, Carl, I really wasn't meant to do this kind of thing." Exactly. Well, it, it kind of worked. I mean, it doesn't look. The only problem is, um, unless you've got under certain uh, situations, the the Stream Deck only outputs at 720p. There is a way to make it go into 1080p, but obviously that affects the quality of it because it's only a small processor in there. Really, um, it's yeah. amazing what they've done with it. But anyway, but my capture card doesn't advertise itself as a 1080p possibility so it's stuck at 720p at the moment i've got to figure that out um but yeah i I did a few little demos and um played around with it It possibly it could be something to do in the future but as always it's all about time finding the time to do it yeah and i might it's you know as i mentioned the other time i was on my work situation means i might soon have lots of time to play about with it but (laughs) that's not not a good thing no that's not so yeah, so that's what I've been doing when on my Mac. Ooh, 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 ooh. Thank you, thank you for that. Um, I'm still on the road NT1. I mean, I'm, it's connected to a bunch of different crap, but it's still the same microphone, and we've already talked about that. Now today, what we're going to do is, and we're we're doing this live, so who the hell knows what's going to happen. We're going to play around with some of the AI programs that um, that both Carl and I, mostly me, have become obsessed with over the course of uh, the last couple of weeks. Now, Carl uses you use Chat GPT, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I use it for. You have it like a paid paid version of that. Yep, 
I use it for like summarization of stories and stuff like this and um, helping me compile tweets and things like this. It's, it's, it's really good. Um, once you learn how to use it properly, I shall say. Yeah. And uh, I use Copilot, which is included with Microsoft 365. And um, just recently started using that for developing all of the uh, the artwork for the various podcasts that I'm involved in. And I know Carl has been doing that for a while, but I, I kind of resisted that. And I don't know why, because once I started using it, it was like, oh, this is great. I love this. And from there, I found that Copilot has a plugin to create songs from this, what is it, Suno? Is that what it is? Suno. Yeah. yeah, Suno. And it's it's fantastic. It really, really works well and gives you some, I mean, you basically just give it the, the basic parameters of what kind of song you want as far as genre and, and what's the song about and all the rest of that. And it'll give you a one to two minute song in, and they sound really good in almost any of these different genres. So uh, hopefully we'll actually have some people come in here because I would like some suggestions live from the audience on, you know, oh. artwork to make or songs to make or something along those lines. And when I, this, editing this show is going to be such a pain in the neck because I don't think I'm going to include in the audio version all of the stuff as we were creating all this, because if you can't see it, for the most part, it doesn't really matter. So we'll talk, like, we're including this bit here where we're talking about the programs that we're going to use. But for the most part, I'm not going to include that, you know, the when we actually start making stuff in the audio version, because that'll, that'll just bore the crap. I think out of people more so than, you know, usual. Um, there's, there's been a lot of work on the, uh, the, the next Mac stock conference and expo. Mike Potter has been putting out a ton of stuff and that's this year. It's going to be July 12th through the 14th in Woodstock, Illinois. Don't if you if you can't afford the scratch of traveling there, or if you live in the Chicago area, you really really need to check out this show because it's just so much fun, and there's lots of great people that attend it, and you there's a lot of information there to be had. But the the big thing for me is the camaraderie, and it reminds me a lot of a lot of the get-togethers that we used to have at the old old Macworld Expo. He said with a with his cane in one hand and his voice all creaky in the other, where a lot of people would just get together and, and just have a lot of fun. And that's the camaraderie of the Mac Stock Conference and Expo is kind of what makes this show, as well as all the information that you can get to it. So you can find out more information on it by going to MacStockConferenceAndExpo.com or just type in Mac Stock into, into any kind of search engine, and eventually you'll find your way there. Um, I don't know if I have the Gaz's snippets thing. I don't think I do, actually. Nice work. Yeah, well, you know, I should have had it, but I don't. So instead, we're just going to go right into Gaz's snippets. Da -da -da. Ba -ba -bum. Ba -ba -bum. Uh, so Apple this month sued its former employee, Andrew Aude, A-U-D-E, in California State Court, alleging that he had breached the company's confidentiality agreement and violated labor laws by leaking sensitive information to the media and employees at other tech companies. Apple has demanded, demanded, I say, a jury trial and is seeking damages in excess of $25,000. Now, in the grand scheme of things, when you when we talk about you know, the EU going after Apple for, you know, 500 million and the Department of Justice going after Apple for like these huge sums of money. And then you turn around and say, Apple wants $25,000. It's kind of like, okay, well, if you find like 15,000 more people like that, then we're talking real money, but it's going to take some time to get there. Now, was, 
Was this that person? You remember uh, a little while ago, it, it was rumoured Apple were putting out fake leaks, fake oh, information. Oh, they do that. To, it was, it, was that the result, this guy? Oh, they, ca they catch people like this all the time. And you'd think people would learn that, you know, they see, they see a couple of leaks and they start to narrow it down by putting out fake information through, you know, it's, it's almost like a security bracket. Like right now, mm -hmm. We've got the March Madness basketball tournament coming on, or that's on, and it's going from 64 teams to 32 teams to 16, so on and so on and so on. Well, Apple's doing the same thing, except it's security madness. And so they say, well, we've got these, you know, however many number of employees that we think could be involved, and they're on these teams. So they start putting out fake information, see where the next bit comes out, and then, they, ah, okay, so we, we can eliminate these people here. And so now we're going to put it out on just these particular branches. And eventually yeah. they, they, they get it down to the point where it's like, okay, it's this idiot here. <laughs> and I call him an idiot because not only was he leaking confidential information, which is a great way to completely ruin your career, no matter what tech company that you're working for, he used his Apple issued phone, Apple issued oh. phone going through Apple's servers to do most of the leakage. So it's not like, you know, once Apple got his phone, it's like, yeah, it's it's pretty clear who's doing this here. So, yeah, Andrew, you really didn't think this through very, very well. And for future leakers, we love the information, but you're only screwing yourself in the long run. All right. Um I don't know if you've heard this one, Carl. According to rumors, Apple will release new iPads in early May. The release will center on revamped versions of the iPad Pro and iPad Air. Uh, according to Bloomberg, the Pro models will get crisper new OLED displays, OLED. Uh, short. Oh, and it even says there, short for organic light emitting diode. That's what happens when you do some copy and paste. While the iPad Air... We'll get a 12.9 inch version and likely many of these out updated models will be outfitted with the M3 processor. Had you heard about this? Yeah. Rumors, they keep coming up. I mean, the, the, the rumor was, like I say, they, um, they can't get those OLED displays working to the extent they, they, they wanted them to. So that's what's caused the delay apparently, but who knows? It's all rumors, isn't it? Rumors. From that Mark, from that Mark Gurman. <laughs> Gurman. Oh God. There's a couple of guys, that, as soon as I see that they're the ones that have put out these rumors, it's like, okay, you're basically going, putting out whatever you can, seeing what sticks onto the wall. Most of it is like so completely obvious. So you can sit there and bask in the glory and say, see, I told you that's what was going to happen. Well, what about this other one? Oh, I, 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 I don't know anything. Yeah. Well, he's, he's got a Philly's newsletter up, hasn't he? So he's got to put something in there. Yeah. That's it. So uh, next one, Apple's stock price is down, Carl. It's down. <sighs> no. Yeah, because it doesn't have AI and is fighting with both the EU and the DOJ in the U.S. <laughs> as they try to force Apple to allow third-party app stores, say, a lot of analysts with nothing better to do. Well, okay. Yes, probably. If they're being attacked from all sides by these supposedly legal bodies <laughs> which are called into question in some cases but there you go um yeah i mean the, the investors are not gonna want to invest their money when they think they've got a big payout coming at some point but you know just just so a joke crazy. really yeah it pretty much is uh apple's annual developers conference is set to open june 10th and run through june 14th as per usual any hardware announcements are likely to be afterthoughts as they concentrate on new versions of the Mac OS, iOS, iPad OS, Apple TV OS, and Vision OS. Have I have I left anything out there? Is there like AirPod OS or something like I don't even know anymore. Oh, Watch OS. I didn't even put how could I miss Watch OS? Watch OS as well. Slap me for being a bad boy. There's supposed to be announcements concerning AI. Uh, how and which of these operating systems will get it first has not been announced, of course, and whether there will be standalone applications using AI uh, as well, or if it's all just going to be, you know, baked in kind of thing, because that's worked so well with um, S-Lady. 
Yeah. All right. I need to do, I need to do something, though, because it's um, kind of embarrassing. I, I asked Siri the other day, actually, because um, it was raining. In England. Yeah. Shock horror. I know. But, <laughs> I know. What? But I said, um, how, how long is it going to be raining for? And it does know this because it tells you on the weather app. So what would you think Siri's response would be? I have a feeling I know, but go ahead. Here's, here's a website. Yeah. For why? <laughs> While you're driving in your car or That's delivery funny. van or, or what have you. Uh, my wife, uh, I think I talked about this last week. My, my wife was trying to find out, and it just happened today, as a matter of fact, as well, was trying to find out what time the college, you know, the, the March Madness college basketball games were mm-hmm. going to be on today. And it was like, Instead of just saying, well, North Carolina is playing Duke at blah, 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 blah. It's like, here's some helpful, helpful links for you. And she's like, just tell me. It is Please. embarrassing. Um, but at the same time, I kind of wonder how much of this is like me too, because Google is is adding or suppose, talking about adding all kinds of AI in Um Microsoft has Copilot, which is a standalone app. It, it's, I don't know how well it's baked into their, you know, things like uh, Excel and Word and all the rest of that. Um, so well, how much been, of it is just, go ahead. We've all been trained, like we've got HomePods, which are, you know, don't really do, but we've got the um, the uh, Amazon equivalent, the Echoes and stuff, and yeah. Google's had their ones, and you can literally, you can, Okay, it's fake, obviously, but you can have a conversation with them. You can't have a conversation with Siri, and I know it's it's it was it came from a time where it was uh, existed to do different things, literally to turn lights on or off, literally to tell you what song is playing, literally to co- tell it what song to play next, and things like that. But I, Apple's bought so many AI companies over the last few years, but nothing seems to come of them. And I know they use machine learning, and that's great. AI, machine learning is a subsection of AI and stuff. We all know that. But um, yeah. But it just, it just seems dumb. <laughs> that's it. I mean, as you, as you might uh, see later on when we go through our various apps that we use, like right? you can put ChatGPT on your phone Oop. as an app and have a conversation with it over the mic and she, and she answers back and forth and you just get into a little conversation and it's yeah. great and he's amazing and you think why, why can't Siri do this yeah. why why not why the hell not why can't it it is very frustrating um the last thing i have before we we move on uh amazon and i i did this and i should know better but i did do this Amazon is adding Palm Biometrics to make purchases. It's called Amazon One. It's a separate app and can be used for payment, entry to venues, age verification, and loyalty rewards. If you already have an Amazon account and a payment method with that account, you can tie it to Amazon as well. The app will take pictures of your palms and special readers at venues will be able to scan it for payment or entry. Amazon claims it's 99.99% accurate is what they claim. So do you, do you guys have Amazon stores there in the UK? Like we grocery those, stores um, and things like that? We have some of those grocery places where you meant to just walk in, pick up what you want and walk out again. I got one yeah. near me down in Chingford. Um, down the oh, road. and then it's assuming you're actually going to pay for it as compared to just well, going in, I don't know. It's picking it up and days, walking out. All the videos I see on Twitter, it's kind of implied that you don't pay for anything anymore. You just walk out of it, apparently, and that's yeah. fine. Who needs to be a law-abiding citizen in this day? Nah, age? that's crazy talk. Um, <laughs> I have one, and I'm probably going to try it maybe next week, though maybe not, because, of course, well, not of course, but next Friday, my wife and I are going to Rochester, New York, to see the eclipse. So it's going to be a very short week for me anyway. Um, I'm so looking forward to that. That's going to be so much fun. Anyway, that's uh, unless you have anything, that's all I have for Gaz's snippets. No, that's that's it. Yeah, uh, obviously I'm looking forward to WWDC, but it's a few months away yet. So that's, that's it, really. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. That's it for Gaz's snippets. Now we're going to move on to some fun stuff. We're going to start talking about some of this AI. Talking about the AI. 
talk about the AI as compared to, you know, being on the Facebooks. Well, what, what about the, um, the argument against AI at the moment that seems to be raging in, in some quarters where, you know, it's, oh, it's rubbish. It's going to end the world. If you use it, you're not, you're not creative at all. And you know, that those arguments, have you heard those arguments? Sure, and they're absolutely true. Um, yeah, exactly. It's, there's it doesn't matter, does it, it? It takes absolutely almost zero effort. I mean, yeah, okay. You say like for Suno, for example, you say, okay, I want a rock song concerning a uh, pumpkin that wants to do Broadway, and that's all you have to put in. Create a song about a pumpkin, a rock song about a pumpkin that wants to do Broadway and it will create it for you and it'll make up the words. It'll make up, you know, the chorus, it'll make up the music and it'll give you not just one, but two different versions to choose from. And it's the same thing with like the, the, um, uh, the graphics that I've been cr- using. I almost said creating, but I'm not creating them. Hmm. Uh, Copilot is creating those. I'm just following along and putting in, you know, my Mac podcast, blah, blah, blah. And then the name of the show at the bottom. But at the same time, when I wasn't using it, I was basically just grabbing images off the net and th- throwing them into a, a to Acorn, the, the graphics program that I use and doing the same thing. At least this way, it's, it's original artwork. It's not. You know, and by original, I mean, it, it, nobody else made it. It was made in this program. So I, you know, yeah, I completely, completely agree with that statement that anything that you're making in AI and whether it's, you know, a short outline for a script or a song or a graphic image or a short story or whatever, if all you're doing is putting in, well, I want five characters that are fighting each other because there's vampire zombies out there or whatever, you know, that's you're coming up with the idea is like just the beginning of the creative process. There has to be follow up in all of the words and all of the music and all of the graphic images should be coming from you and not being created by, by AI. And we'll see where it goes. Right now, it's just kind of fun. I'm I'm enjoying using it. Hmm. But it's not the be-all to end-all of the creative process. And you shouldn't rely on it. And if you do, don't kid yourself that <laughs> you've created something that's like new and original. No, it's, it's some, but something else did. It wasn't you. The problem, I think, comes is when people try to pass it off as something they've created through blood, sweat, and tears or whatnot. I yeah. mean, like you say, I use it for a bit of fun. I use it for cover art on the show. Who cares? Otherwise, i just copy something of someone else's work anyway from photo, um, the internet and put it on there. I know that's yeah. bad as well. Don't get me wrong. But um, otherwise, it's just a, the same cover every week, which is boring. Um, yeah. And music, you know, the music is great. It's, it's the, the, the thing guys about to talk to. It's great because, again, if you're doing video content, which I've obviously done in the past and stuff, and you're looking for that filler piece of music, you you go online and you buy some some generic music, you know, to lay underneath your stuff, yeah. unless you can make it yourself. Now you can just literally type in a few, I want some jolly music, click the instrumental uh, That's option. 30 seconds long or whatever. And you've got something to bed down under your audio temporarily. Just something quick. Um the problem, the problem might arise um, is if you're not very good at your job, you might have a problem very soon. So if you are in the creative sphere and you're just just struggling to get by and you're sort of like hiding the fact that you're not very good at your job or whatever, um, you might have a problem moving forward because these, these things are good now. In a year or so, they're going to be much, much better. <laughs> you, yeah. you might have a problem. Yeah, so you know, get better, get better at what it is you're doing. Well, no, use them, use them to enhance your skills that you already have. Just yeah. because if you say to it, for example, uh, give me ten ideas for a scene, 
then it just gives an idea. And then you can, I mean, there's only seven stories apparently anyway. I remember yeah. reading in creative writing class once. Uh, and it's just how you adapt those different segments of the story that make it a, a thrilling, engaging property, unless you work for Hollywood when you just suck all the life and joy out of every product you do nowadays. <laughs> but, so, but yeah, independent films are going to come a long way. And technology, I think this kind of technology is going to help because you've already got like Hollywood spending like hundreds of millions of pounds uh, dollars to produce movies nowadays. And yet this kind of stuff is going to help independent producers create what looks like high quality special effects and stuff much, much cheaper. Yeah. Well, and not only that, one of the, one of the reasons why we had the Hollywood strike was, you know, the, the writers and a lot of the people that work on these movies are becoming very concerned that they won't be necessary anymore, that they'll just put in, okay, well, you know, Bob sees Linda at a grocery store hugging someone and assumes that his marriage is over. Give me a 30 minute outline of a script that that's going to handle that. And that, you know, and it'll just, it'll just poop out whatever the hell it is that, that it's put in to, to or that you put in to say, give me this for this, for this, for this. And I, and, I bet, I bet the reason they were scared about that is because some of them had already did it, done it. <laughs> yeah, it, that wouldn't surprise me at all. You. Okay. Um, in case I do separate the demonstrations from the explanations. Now, I'm using Copilot and Suno. What, what AI programs are you using and what can you tell me about them? Well, I use, like I say, ChatGPT mainly for um, most of the things I do related to my show and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I've also used it for work, for work things as well. Like uh, we had a, a little bit of a dispute between the staff and the company. And we got together and I asked everyone, look, okay, give me, your, give me what's annoying you at the moment. And, and I, got this, I got this list of about 10 different points. And they're obviously like all in driver speak because, you know. So I put them into ChatGPT and I said, we're in a dispute with management at the moment. Here are the 10 points we, we, we're annoyed about. Can you put this in a non-confrontational format <laughs> that looks like we're we're open to moving things forward? And it went away, and it came back, and everything everything was laid out perfectly. Everything was like in corporation speak, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, and we presented it, and we pretty much got everything we was demanding. <laughs> so that was good. Okay. Um. You know, and this is something so, we should have done before we started. Uh, do you know how to bring your screen into StreamYard here? Are uh, you no, no, sharing? No, actually. But it's all right. I mean, it's, it's okay. Because I'll, 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 mine's, mine's mainly going to be ChatGPT and stuff, so I'll just I'll read okay, it. Okay, well, it if you look at the control panel at the bottom of your screen, there's one that says present. Mm -hmm. that's, that's basically how you do it. So all let's right. start off. Let's start off with uh, Copilot. So I'm going to bring this up on the screen. Uh, share screen. Window. <laughs> Where is it? There it is. Share. All right. So, and let's solo this. So here's Copilot. Uh, give me, give me something. Give me anything, something to create. Uh, what, like a picture or something? Yeah. A man, a man sitting in a basement with too many microphones. I can't imagine where I got that image from. I don't know. With too many microphones and he's whoops not her i'll take he's, you on a top ty touch typist guy no i am not <laughs> and he's sad hey. and that's that's really all you have to do and then it just goes out and says okay i'm gonna make that I'm and it will it eventually give us some images here which is and this is why i was going to cut a lot of this out from 
the uh oh <laughs> okay so there you go what do you think about that <laughs> and even process. better each week, isn't it? Before you start a show, what microphone? I know. Use? What microphone am I going to use? I can go between a, squ a square. Let, let's turn this into a landscape. Because this <laughs> is the, the image size that I usually use in order to have it on the MyMac podcast as, as graphic art. So, and there you go. Look at that. Wow. Isn't it? That's like super amazing. And I'm not wearing shoes for some reason, which is really funny. How does that go? And there's a way to, let's see, I'm just going to say it looks good. You've got some filters down here, pixel art, watercolor, block print, steampunk, which I love. Let's hit steampunk. Uh oh. And see what happens with that. But mm. this. This stuff, and it's so easy to use. And it, if you're already using Microsoft 365, there's no extra charge for this. You can you can just go in and play with this to your heart's delight. Uh, it doesn't really look that different. <laughs> it like, no, it looks exactly the same. I guess because yeah. it was kind of a tech image to begin with. It was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it was, it's a little bit different. Let's do uh, watercolor. So, and again, I'm not doing anything. I'm basically just going, okay, well, try this filter or do that filter and see what comes up. And it's going to try to create that. You know, you kind of wish it was a little faster, but at the same time, you know, it it's not taking any real extra effort on your part. And if you like that particular image, you just hit looks good. And then it's, you're done. You can share it. You can, you know, here's your, you can, the link to that particular thing. And you can share this with other people. At least I should be able to. Sometimes I've had some problems getting that to work. Let me go into messages and see if that actually did copy that that URL. Yeah, it did. Okay, so I just sent that image to Carl over there on Messages. And that was really all it took. Yeah. And once I have this image, I can bring it into another graphics program. And I know there's a way to add text and stuff, but because of the nature of these programs, it's not going to be consistent. You're not going to get the same text in the same area for every single image that you may create. So for me, it's just easier to say, okay, give me the basic image. And this is probably the image that I'm going to use for today's show because I kind of like that. Um, and then just add the, the text to the top and the bottom of the image in another program. Now, doing images isn't the only thing that this can do. You've also got, it says a designer. I'm not really quite, you know, and some of this I haven't even really tried. So you can ask it. I, I don't know what that does. Personal shopper, if you're looking for something in particular, uh, I guess it'll it'll go out and, and try to help you find it. A vacation planner. So I'm going to Rod, let's, let's do, actually, let's use this. Let's say Rochester, New York. Rochester, New York. And we'll see what it comes up with. Oh. <laughs> just sometimes it just takes a while to come up. Yeah. Uh, variety of attractions and activities to explore. Here are some highlights. The Strong National Museum of, Pl of Play. Whatever so that is. It, it's just listing uh, uh, various things that you might want to visit. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean Google could do that technically as well. Sure. Mm-hmm. And it gives yeah. you uh, links. It's giving you a map of the area where all of those things are. And yeah, and Google, you're right. Google can easily do a lot of this as well. But I think that just having it concentrated on this one particular page, I, and it's it's very specific. 
on the things that it's giving you. So I think well, that's kind of cool. Bear in mind, you just typed in three words there, Rochester, New York. You could maybe uh, go deeper into it. And what was what's the, because um, it had a few example questions when you initially went to that page. Um, yeah, can you where refresh was it? That, refresh that and see. Yeah, what are some back? good restaurants? Uh, tell me more about the history of Kodak. Are there outdoor activities near Rochester? So, so if I wanted, let's hit, hit restaurants and see what comes up. Well, again, that's just got to do a Google search effectively enough. So. Yeah. But um, I was just wondering if it could come up with an itinerary or, or something like that. That's all. Uh, well, Edibles. tell me, tell me what, tell me what you mean. Edibles. Hang on. <laughs> Isn't that druggy things? No, well, yeah, but I think this is just like a regular place to go right. to That's get something to name. eat. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, what's the best pizza place? Tell me more about local breweries. Are there any vegan restaurants? So, you know, you can you can easily just – it, it actually about, is like trying to anticipate. How about create a pub crawl? Let's see if it understands what a pub crawl is. Okay. In that same location. Create a pub crawl for Rochester. <laughs> this could save me a lot of time in future. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see what it does. That's a good idea. Let's see. Searching. Certainly. Oh, it's just doing tours. That's no. Bar crawl events. See, we we We've kind of pushed the limit there. Spotted a gap in the market there. The <laughs> yeah. AI. Man, how? What's the easiest way I can get drunk and walk around the city at the same time? Uh, mm -hmm. It also has a cooking assistant. So, like, uh, let's see. Let's say uh, lemon chicken. Two words. It's a delightful dish. Delightful. And it's giving me at least the ingredients for easy lemon chicken. So I, I, I just put in the same thing for ChatGPT. Okay. Right, so a uh, pub crawl in London can be a fantastic way to explore the city's rich pub culture and vibrant <laughs> nightlife. That's why I go out, not not to get ratted. Uh, it's curated route that takes you through some iconic and much must-visit pubs across different neighbourhoods. The Mayflower, nice. Rotherhive. Start your crawl. I'm not going to Rotherhive. Start your crawl at a historic pub that offers a riffside views and cosy atmosphere. It's known for its traditional English pub fare and owls. Uh, next, head to London's oldest riverside pub, the prospect of will be whopping <laughs> historical you got to get across the river um yeah. variety of beers and picturesque views of the thames moving on visit the infamous pub now known for its association with jack the ripper the ten bells field i've drunk there not too long ago actually it's a great spot to enjoy some local beers and soak in the history and it goes on and on and on and on yeah so, so that's very great. if you're looking for a pub crawl sounds like chat gpt is going to do it better than copilot will yeah. Co copilot you're you're letting us down you're really letting us down because i just said london and london's a fairly big place you know I, I should have, i've like, heard of the place yeah i should have like zeroed in on an area maybe and and then done it but uh there you go uh last thing well that's really not the last thing there's one other thing <laughs> i'm going to show but you have a fitness trainer here so oh. if I put in workout uh, plus 60 man You want to work loss. out with 60 men? <laughs> well, not at the same time. Right, okay. Just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. And so it's wonderful that you're looking to lose. It's like, why are you giving me these little pep talks? You know, just give me, give me the information. Start with a warm up. Yeah. Incorporate strength, add cardio. So it's giving you, it's giving you like different things based on the parameters that you put in uh, to do a workout for uh, a man who is plus 60 years old. And it even... What what you could also find is 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 how your prompt 
um, how how much information you put in your prompt reflects how much information, good information, you get, you back. get back. You put yeah. a generic prompt in and you'll get very little back. You'll just get, you know, obvious things. But then if you sort of, like, uh, zero in on this. So, for example, if it remembers what you've just typed in, Guy, which you should do, you can now ask it something specific, like um, say you've got, bad knees or something like that you know i mean what what could it suggest if you had bad knees you shouldn't be able to suggest running for example um but um okay no, well, you, just add it after, you just keep uh, keep go, keep conversation going it says ask me anything just carry on with the conversation say i've got bad knees <laughs> what can you suggest man no, just type in i've got bad knees what do you suggest Well, not Sylvester Stallone. No, that's true. That's it. Take okay, and then it's going into a workout for somebody that has bad swimming. knees. There you go, swimming, cycling, huh? Upper body training, chair yoga. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tai chi. Tai chi. Which is basically Tai Chi for people who don't know is is basically Kung Fu um, forms in slow motion. In slow motion, yeah. <laughs> and it's it is it is quite a workout. I can I can assure you of that. All right. So if we go back to the regular Copilot, and one of the things that you're going to see is something called plugins. And this this is how I found out about. Suno was going to the plugins and it's not doing what it's supposed to do. Let me refresh. Plugins. Wow. It is like not cooperating. Uh, and you've done it live as well. Who, who, yeah. And, and this is, this is live and you know, Microsoft, this is not looking good for you. <laughs> What's up with this? Okay, well, the plugins, there, there's like six or seven main plugins uh, that I can't show you because they're not appearing, but they are there. And it was how I found out about Suno. Um, let's, let's go ahead and switch to that. Let's see if it'll do this live. Yes, okay. So here's Suno, and you can... This this is like such a crazy. These are like all of the some of the various songs <laughs> that I've that I've made, and there's a lot of them. Uh, but let's come up with a new song, Carl. So, yep. what kind of? Give me a genre. Bluegrass. Okay. Create a bluegrass song about about a zebra called Jeff. A what? A zebra, zebra, as you'd say, oh. probably. <laughs> a zebra Jeff. called Jeff. And is there anything unusual about Jeff the zebra zebra? Who hasn't got stripes, he's got spots. Who has spots instead of <laughs> stripes. What could possibly go? And it starts to make the song. You can see that there's two two new tracks being added there on the bottom. And it usually takes like 30 to 60 seconds for it to do its thing. And you can see one that I made for, for my son, Peter, called Yes, the Mummy. Because that's, that's like the ride that they really, really like uh, at Universal Studios. All right, so it's going to call this song Spotted Jeff. So I like it already. I, 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 I'm very curious to see what the, it's going to create. The lyrics is going to create two verses and a chorus. And because this is the, and this works better if you do it through their website instead of doing it through Copilot. You can do it through Copilot, but that's only going to basically give you about a one minute song. And I found that a lot of times it cuts that off before the song actually completed. And this is this is only version three of this program. So who knows where they're going to take it <laughs> you can in, all go in the future. Uh, but one of the cool things, uh, as we wait for this 
Go <laughs> wait for this to come up. Is you can write your own lyrics, including verses and choruses and all kinds of other things, and then have it create a song for those lyrics, and it'll do that as well. All right, so here is Spotted Jeff says, Folksy Bluegrass Lively. Can you hear it? Not yet. It sometimes takes a second to start playing, doesn't it? That's the trouble. Uh, it should have. It should have. It looks like it's already Down playing. in the meadow. There we go. Where the tall grass grows. There's a zebra named Jeff. Everyone knows. <laughs> He's got spots instead of those classic stripes. <laughs> A secret like him you won't see every day of your life. He prances and dances, grace and style. With his spotted coat, he can always make you smile. When the sun sets and the moon shines bright. Spotted Jeff stands out, he's a beautiful sight. Spotted Jeff, oh, what a sight to see. With harmonies. With his spot so unique, he's the life of the prairie. Spotted Jeff, he's one of the kind of zebra with spots, friend hard to find. Okay, so <laughs> it's it's uh, actually let let's very briefly listen to the the next version. Yeah, it always takes a little while to load up when you first do them, and it's the Pretty same neat. lyrics that yeah, was in lyrics. the previous does a one. Song. Even does even does the album art. Yeah, except it's showing you like a regular zebra. It's not it showing is. you a spotted, a spotted zebra, which is too bad. Yep. Yeah, uh, have you oh, come one? on. <laughs> Down in the middle where the tall grass grows, there's a zebra named Jeff. Everyone knows she's got like spots ready. instead of those classic stripes. Let me move on a little bit. A zebra like him you won't me. see every day of your life. Prances and dances with grace. Okay, so there's there's the the bluegrass song about Spotted Jeff. <laughs> um, let's do another one with like a rock beat. How about uh, create a grunge uh -oh. song about two men who talk all the time but don't listen to <laughs> each other okay and the possibilities the possibilities are endless with this with this kind of thing so i knew about i've heard about this service um obviously a, a, a f for a fair while, but I never looked into it because I always thought, well, how good could it possibly be? Could it possibly be? So I oh, just went, whatever, yeah, okay, it's going to sound like a horribly computer-generated verse of noise. And then you shared one with us, and then I started playing it with myself, and I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I mean, I went and had to lay down a subscription straight away, because it's like eight quid, I think it is, a month. Yeah. But um, what that gives you, it gives you obviously much more credits, because you get, I think, about 100 credits a day or something, I'm not sure. But um, Yeah, not that it, many. You, but you can, but if you pay as well, you can go into a song and say continue this song, and it will fill it out. And then once you've got part two or part three, you can highlight them and combine them into one full length song if you so wish. So yeah, three, a three or four minute song, and and you got you get about two minutes, regardless. Hmm. And if you're trying to do like a podcast intro, or like I did one for Dave Ginsburg for In Touch with iOS. And he was so enamored with it that he went out and, and started doing some for himself. Sally. 
awesome. I did one for the Matt Geek Gab, uh, and, but the original one I did was for uh, sort of for MyMac.com, even though I didn't have it in there. I just said, you know, create a song for a podcast about two Mac men, and it it just blurted out this song, and it was so good. It was like, oh, well, I got to keep playing with this. So then I did one about. Um, it was like a, a heavy metal song about a man who's afraid of ducks and clowns. And it had that whole rah, 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 <laughs> kind of thing with, that you hear with, with so many of like the death metal groups. <laughs> and the, the amount of pleasure and laughter that I was getting from using this program to create these things is, is really, is it, it's, it's so it's not only is it easy to do, but the results that you get back are pretty amazing. Uh, OK, so now we have silent conversation. And it says alternative grunge angsty. So let's hear what let's hear what this one is going to sound like. Oh, you said in silence, attention grows. <laughs> Words wow. unspoken, only eyes that close. We talk all night, but don't say a thing. Oh my god. Our voices clash, a sound that stings. We hear words, but don't understand. Caught up in a It's getting quiet. Oh my god. <laughs> it is it is scarily good. What did you say? I'm sorry. I say it's scarily good. It is, it is. And you can actually I I'll have to see if I can find it. Um I actually put in one time live to be like a, a live kind oh, of recording. Yeah, it did it. Uh, let me hear what this second one is real quick. I'm not gonna <laughs> Okay. That sounds a little like Green Day. Day. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and you know, if if you do this enough and you have enough credits, I imagine you could come up with like the next Nirvana song or or <laughs> something along those lines. Uh, let me see if I can find the one that was like supposed to be live. What um, what I enjoy doing with it is because uh, I had a, uh, I had, I have given myself, uh, I have tried myself to write a country song, which is kind of hard yeah. when you're in Britain because it, but it kind of works. But anyway, I did um, I did a song, uh, based uh, about a series of my a part, point in my life about something that happened, and I I did the whole, the whole lot. I had like I had like two verses and a chorus chorus and i thought well i need a little bit more help with this because some time would pass so firstly i put what i had already done into chat dpt and said this is a story this is a, a country song about the, what the situation was and i said can you fill in another verse a bridge and an outro and it finished it finished off the the lyrics like and uh, i changed a few of them and then i posted that into uh suno and i said make it into a, a country ballad thing um, and it did it, and it, it did it in two parts, and then I cut, like I say, I joined them together and created a whole song, which I'm not going to play at the moment, but it's, <laughs> it's, it was amazing, and I just thought, my God, and even though, and it was Toe Tappy as well, which was incredible, and although I'm never going to share it, I'm not going to load it up to iTunes or anything like Apple Music or whatnot, but it would be good enough for me to listen to for my own personal enjoyment, because it's my, well, the first two thirds of it is my, my lines. 
Um, yeah, and it just it created so many possibilities. And if I was musically inclined, which I'm not, no, I, I would. I would use it to, you could use it as a base to go in and do your own riffs and stuff like this based on top of it and lay down backing tracks and whatnot like yeah. that. So it's so, it, it's so freeing for, you know, Joe Bloggs, who hasn't got the talent, unfortunately. So they can use this to have a bit of fun with. If they then start passing it off as professional works, yes, that's obviously wrong on, wrong. on a moralistic point. And, of view. and actually, there are, there are things against doing that in. I'm sure in Suno, because uh, you have to like it, you, you can take these songs and post them and sell them if you want uh, in Apple Music, but you have to provide credit back to Suno because yeah, it's yeah. Suno that's yeah. actually other than the in your case other than the words, um, it, it's almost like Lennon McCartney. You know, it would have to be Madden Suno kind of thing <laughs> in order for it to be. Uh, protected, I guess. If you, if, in fact, if you just go back to Suno a minute, there's a their front page has got like the top rated songs that other people have done. If you go back to Explore, oh, I think it is. Yeah, actually, uh, real quick, let me show you this live arena rock one I did called "I Hate All Tech and Those Who Speak." <laughs> And what's cool about this, not <laughs> only do they have that opening bit where you hear the crowd and all the rest of that, and your typical, you know, all right, we're going to get this song started with some hard pounding drugs, drugs, drums, <laughs> and well, that too, probably. And then we're going to bring in like a wailing guitar, and then the guy's going to start to talk. But as he's singing, you can still hear the crowd in the background and it's it's just it's crazy how how well this works all right so let's go to explore and so these are like a bunch of songs that you can make public that other people have created and just to pick one here at random how to cook sausage on grill <laughs> and that is going to be done in it says hard style dance. So uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> And it's got the whole yes. recipe in the lyrics. Fresh sausage wings, such as brought for us to die in sausage, or kill basta. Bring it again, squelch a medium high. Four thick degrees <laughs> at one side. Push hot coals to one side of a charcoal grill. Place sausage lace on the oil grates. Over the gas grill to medium. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh i wonder you remember those you remember when you got a test or something and you've got to remember all the i don't know the capitals of of yeah. places and what i wonder if you could put that in as lyrics and then have a create a tune a snappy tune that you could memorize so then when you're in the test you sort of sing the song back to yourself and you get the answers yeah i think it, it very well could but that's that's, that is brilliant and here's another one here. It says, Whiskey, Beer, and Swing, done to Irish folk. Do you want to hear the beginning of that one? Oh, you know I do. In the heart of Dublin town where the music roars, there's a pub with swinging beats and whiskey pours. People wow. dancing in the crowded smoky haze. To the tunes and mixed tradition with a modern craze. Oh, yeah. Whiskey, beer, and swing. Oh, yeah. We're swinging, drinking. Okay, 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 okay. It's, okay. it's slanderous to happen. That is, and and I would love to see, and I don't know if you can, if it'll show, yes, you can actually see what it was 
that they put in to create this song. Uh, let me zoom up on that right there. So they put in Irish folk, electro swing, electro bass leany, whatever the hell that is. Uh, double time at 240 beats per minute, jazz, wow. electro, swing revival, jump blues. I didn't know you could put bass, uh, beats per minute in. Neither did I. I, I wasn't aware of that. And okay. from experimenting is how I found out about the, the live thing. So if you wanted to do, like, what was that one that was making us laugh earlier? Oh, the, the recipe one. I don't see it now. How to cook <laughs> sausage on grill. So I said, you could take, uh, let's see, if I took that, so it says hairstyle, dance, trance, fast BPM, hard kick. So oh, you could put live in front of that, and it would probably be like all of your buddies sitting around the grill as you're talking about how you're making this sausage. It is crazy. And, of course, after, you can download it as well. You can stick that in the garage band. You can do all kinds of weird stuff to it as well. Yes, um, yes. You can do, in, like I say, instrumental version, put your own lyrics over the top of it, I suppose. I'm not quite sure how it all works. But, like, I, I was ast I was astounded. And, and there's now other things coming through to do similar things with video. Um, yeah. That's not released yet, but they keep te teasing it on X about all these, you know, prompts they'll put in, and it will show, like, a cinematic movie none of this nonsense where images are blurring around like what was it um uh like will smith eating spaghetti those days have gone this is just amazing stuff that, that they're now producing um which is why i can see like ai as it moves along becoming more and more accessible to a lot more people and opening up their creativity but has been stuck behind their lack of skill so to speak yeah just because well, you haven't got the skills it don't mean you lack some creativity point. Mm. Case in uh, point, I was actually looking for something like that when I when I had that um, that Mac Men song. I would love to have like a little graphic that would go along with that, so that I could use that for like an opening of a video podcast. But I couldn't find anything that wasn't so hard to use that I could just use images that I could use in um, one of those. Not, not presentation software. Um, oh, what is the name of that? Uh, bop, 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 bop. Yeah, I can't find it. Camtasia 2000 or, uh, yeah. you know, well, something along few, those lines. Not too long to go, I don't think, Guy, and there'll be something out there for you. It's crazy how fast this stuff has come on. And I still think that now you could probably do it. I think you should now turn the Maltese Cube into a musical. <laughs> We've been talking about that. Yeah. And I actually, let me go back to my library. I actually have been playing around with a couple of different songs. Come on, library. That would, um, let me do that. And it's not showing me all of the various ones that I've made. Oh, that's too bad, because I would like to would have liked to have played at least one of them but it was like a 1940s crooner type song that umax c series is singing to herself because mac and tosh the detective of the story doesn't really pay attention to her in a romantic way <laughs> and it was it was brilliant it was so good it was like oh that's perfect and it, it would it's going to take some juggling of the dialogue in order to fit the songs in. And then of course, recording the, the, the voices for each one of the characters. And I imagine I could actually use AI to record the characters. Well, there is, and you uh, have that actually, you have that labs. program. So this is 11 labs where you can, uh, Record. So I've done it in the past. Uh, let me see if I can bring up what I've got in the past. Uh, if you've listened to Mac and Forth, you've probably heard this before somehow. Actually, actually it's just going to take You a did one with that. me, with my voice. I did one with you, yeah. So, um, let me just bring it up. Uh, where where have I put them all? <laughs> I put them in the... Uh, oh, yes. It may not play. Mm, maybe. You know what, Gaz? What's that? As you know... I hear it. Go away. Oh, you know what, Gaz? What's that? 
as you know, I've been doing podcasts for a long time. A very, very long time. And I have constantly been searching for that one microphone, that one microphone to make me sound so sexy and astute that absolutely no one, no one would question my knowledge and authority of the Apple community. Well, I would, naturally, always. Well, yes, apart from you, get. <laughs> now, now that was a generation, a few generations ago. They've come on much more since then. Um and it's it's just crazy to uh, like in in the past, for example, they couldn't with the British voice accent or London accent in my case, right? It made us sound too posh, right? So yeah, so, Gaz was complaining about that. Yeah, so I think I, I can't remember what I say in this one. So so I'm playing this. So I've come to the conclusion that in fact, his the Last Jedi is a masterpiece of filmmaking. The plot is in no way dumb, but a rare <laughs> glimpse of a genius storyteller who is so good that they used their first draft and apparently made very few changes, even after other obviously lesser mortals pointed out inconsistencies and plot issues littered throughout. Fortunate, the almost godlike talent paid them no heed and forged onward with his myopic vision, and as a result, <laughs> we can, to this day, bask in the wonder and dominance that has become of the Star Wars brand. <laughs> so, yeah, I sound a bit too posh on that one. I'm sure if I did it now, they've got... And kind of, called... kind of monosyllabic, if that's the yeah. right... But now... Is... You can you can speak your own script into it, and it will copy. It, it, I mean, you can put it words the inflections in. of your yes, voice, kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, so you can read it yourself, and then use one of their voices or one of your pre-recorded voices, and it will adapt how you speak to how they're speaking. Well, because I know we we had talked about, and this is completely off topic, uh, we had talked about putting the Maltese Cube out as a multi-episode. Uh, podcast and I had actually contacted some people to do voices and I'd actually gotten some back, but circumstances and, and time just kind of got away from me. And this was a couple of years ago, but we completely Carl and I got together online like this and completely rewrote the story in a script form as compared to the, the, Bad form, bad form no, that it was form. in before in the book form. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you want and it, it, you don't have to, you can still buy this book on, I think it's on Amazon and, and Apple books. Uh, I don't, I don't normally talk about it that much because I'm not particularly proud of it, but I think it would be brilliant as not only a podcast, but as a musical podcast i think that would just be so funny so that's something that carl and i may talk about at some point in the future um and whether we get real people to record the voices or we use something like what what was the name of that company 11 labs 11 labs to do all of the the various voices because i think there's like 15 16 different parts um it it needs to be done it really, really does. And it's just a question of, of you know, and, and the, here's the thing about this. For people who want to do something like this, have your story complete before you begin. Have all of the episodes recorded before you release anything. Because if you're halfway through and it's like, oh, I don't really know where to take this story, or some particular person had to drop out and couldn't finish, you know, their part of the script or whatever, it, it's just going to come off really, really bad. So have it complete all of the episodes done and ready to be released before you do any of that. Hollywood could learn from that. Stop starting films without a finished script. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> or or taking uh, something that a director has completed and completely butchering it and adding more <sighs> stuff from a different director. <sighs> Anyway, that's uh, we didn't announce it, but um, that was uh, that was Gaz's tip. Hit it. That's the end of Gaz's tips. That's Most the end of Gaz's tips. That's the end of Gaz's tips. Okay, is that the uh, the end of the tip? Will you let me finish? Gaz's tips. Gaz, you are absolutely right. Ah! Okay, so I didn't do the beginning of that and probably should have, but I didn't think of it. Now we have, uh, Carl, do, do you get a lot of feedback on your show? Uh, 
Well, I got we got Discord, so we get a lot of feedback via Discord. Like people have conversations over there and stuff like this, and we get reviews. But that's about it. Yeah, uh, we kind of rely on people contacting us outside of you know either through email or something like that, and we don't always get a lot of stuff. But we did get this one from this guy, and I'm I'm not really sure what his problem is. He's he's very very mad about something for some reason, and he calls himself Mister Cheesed Off. Are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. Here it is. Hello, guy and gaz, Mister Cheesed Off here. What greater torment could life offer than listening to you two chuckleheads bleat on about the latest Apple-related news? Together, you're like the dynamic duo of drivel. It's like being trapped in a lift with two screaming fanboys and the bloody open button is broken. And the jokes, each quip hits the mark with the accuracy of a flipping stormtrooper. But let's be fair, where else can you get such insightful views into the world of Apple that you feel like you're being not so gently bludgeoned to death with a MacBook? I'd rather listen to a flipping dial-up modem symphony than tune into you two each week, but you just keep popping up on my podcatcher. It really cheeses me off. Goodbye. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Cheese off. <laughs> He's wow. he's not happy. Uh, Mr. Cheesedoff, as with everyone who contacts us for the first time, please send me your email address, and I will send you a Woo Tea. Do you know what a Woo Tea is, Carl? I know what a Woo Tea is. I'm not going to say oh, that big W, little O thing, though. Oh, it's, well, no, no. It's big W, big O, big O, big T, little I, little E, exclamation mark. That is a Woo Tea. So, Mr. Cheesedoff. Even though apparently you don't like the show very much, if you contact me, I will send you a specially crafted Woo Tea just for you. You're welcome. Uh, we also got a call from from a, a new listener, not a new listener, but somebody who's contacted us from the first time or for the first time, uh, Canadian Ross. Canadian Ross, thank you so much for the comment. I'm going to play it here in just a second. Same thing applies to you. Please send me an email and make sure that you mention the name Canadian Ross in it so that I know it's from you, and I will send you a woo tea. And here's here's Canadian Ross. Hey, it's Ross calling from St. John's, Newfoundland, Labrador, in Canada. Hi, Ross. Not too often to hear any stories about Canada on your podcast, but on the last show, you had two stories, and you had trouble pronouncing two of the places. <laughs> what? Well, one place, Mississauga which is right outside of Toronto, Ontario. And the other story was about an online service called Kijiji. I know you guys had trouble saying that one. Anyway, that's what I want to tell you. Great podcast. Wait till next week. Thanks again. Bye. Thank you, Canadian Ross. We really, really do appreciate it. And we question. Yeah, go ahead. Is Canadian Ross going out with Canadian Rachel or are they on a break? Uh, As far as I know, they're on a break. As far as I know. <laughs> oh, the um. Oh, hey, how about this? We actually have a comment. Yeah, hey, guy. <laughs> Where is it? Forgot it how to fake. do this. Hold on a second. It just says Facebook user, but yeah, that's exactly. Cletus over there on on the books of face. Uh, <laughs> hey, Cletus. Uh, I don't know when that came in. Doesn't say. Yes, it does. Uh, it was six minutes ago, and I didn't see it when it came in. <laughs> I did. I was there. <laughs> oh, you should have said something. <gasps> oh, okay. <gasps> okay. Um, if you would like to help support the show, we would really, really appreciate it. You don't have to. We'll keep on doing it whether you do it or not. You can go to patreon.com forward slash MacPettit. You can wow. go... Right, you can go to coffee, ko-fi.com forward slash MacPettit. You can pay a pal at paypal.me forward slash MacPettit. Now, Carl, nah. if people wanted to get a hold of you and say, what the hell were you thinking when you agreed to come on this show again, <laughs> again? I was drunk, wasn't I? You got me when yeah. I was drunk, as always. As always. How would they How would they do that? Uh, you can get a hold of me on X. I'm not going to say formally that other place x yeah. you get me a claw 0101 or you can come and follow us over on the mac and forth podcast uh it's just add that into your or search that on your favorite podcast of choice and you should be able to find us on that and he's back just saw this on facebook <laughs> thank you cletus um if you want to get a hold of uh gaz 
you would open up your email client of choice and type in Gaz. That's G A Z. Cars. You say cars here. It's cars. Sorry, I was I was miles away then. <laughs> At mymac.com. Uh you can also find him on the X's. He is Gazmaz G A Z M A Z. Cars. He's on Mastodon, Gazmaz at C dot M I. Uh, if you want to get a hold of both of us over there on the X's, we are Guy and Gaz, G U Y A N D G A Z. Gaz. And uh, you can contact Fearless Leader Tim, the creator of this podcast, and we've taken it in directions that he would not approve of if he knew ahead of time, but we don't, that's why we don't tell him ahead of time. Uh, and you would send that to feedback at mymac.com, F E E D B A C K at mymac.com. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, you can by again opening up the email of your client and typing in guy, G Y, at mymac.com. Uh, I can also be found over on the X's as Mac Parrot and Vert Shark. I am Mac Parrot over there on Counter Social and Mastodon.social. And we have a Google voice number. Believe it or not, we do. And if you call that number, remember, if you're outside of the United States, you may incur a charge if you dial it directly. So probably the best way is just to record an audio snippet <laughs> and uh, send it to us. But if you wanted to call the Google voice number, uh, Carl, you got that in front of you? No. Hang on. Let me see. No? It's... <laughs> Well, I have money saying what he says here. So if this is wrong, this is wrong. It's 703-828-4677. Outside that number US, again the is? Then one. Oh, uh, 703-828-4677. And that's, that's the number right there. And this week, Carl, we're at the end of the show. Oh, go. Go, go, go. You need to put that into sooner and see if it comes out of a song. For your phone number. <laughs> Want to do that right now? Well, I, well, I've got nothing better to do at the moment. So, <laughs> Okay, why not? Okay, so. Call, so. call us on blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the lyrics. We're going to go to create. Create a, what kind of, what kind of music? Uh, uh, rock. Okay. Rock. Song <laughs> about calling a Google Tender hooks. Tender <laughs> hooks here. Number. As we wait for Guy to use his two fingers to it is. stab this into his keyboard. <laughs> eight two eight. Oh, my chair's too squeaky. Four six seven seven. For a podcast, anything that or a the question, (laughs) and I'll bring this. I'll bring this up on screen as he thinks about it. Sorry to ruin the end of the show like that. (laughs) Oh, and the song is going to be called "Dialing Up the Frequency." Oh, yeah. So it's already got a title. It's gonna be a long oh, I should have though, said create it? a live rock song just out of uh, curiosity if that was gonna, it's too late now. And I'm not going to don't stop the process. No, never, ever stop the process. Don't interrupt them. They only get mad. They do. And then they say, okay, you know what? That thing I was doing before, forget about it. I'm going to start all over again. What's that famous documentary where it's filming them trying to come up with the riffs? And they do a take on it on Father Ted. He goes, what, play the chord? No, not the first chord. We got the first chord. Play the second chord. Wasn't that, um, it wasn't the Ruddles. No, obviously, because that's a, that's a joke band. <laughs> yeah. Well, this this one was a joke band, too. This was... Oh, um, no, I think it's a, a proper Michael documentary. Michael McKeon and a couple of... Uh, Oh, damn it. Well, it's not Spinal Tap, is it? So. Spinal Tap. That's what I was trying to think of. This was a real was a real thing? I think it was. Oh, it's got one there. Got one already. Oh, okay. So let's go ahead and hit this and see what, what it came up with. I picked up the phone and dialed a number. <laughs> didn't know what to expect. Just yeah. took a chance. Got a voice on the line. Said, hello, how can I help you? <laughs> I said I'm calling in for the podcast dance. Oh my god. 
Talk about music, talk about life, share our stories connected deep inside. The conversation flow, the laughter fill the air. I never wanna hang up, I just wanna be there. Dying up the frequency, dying in this song. To go give the number. <laughs> No, I it didn't give the number. I know it got up the phone and dialed the number did Okay, I'm not gonna Okay. So um we have to, have to create one with lyrics and uh and includes the number put it in post or something yeah, yeah. i'll try to find it i'll, I'll, do I'll, I'll try I'll to do one after we finish recording okay so this week we're, we're at the end of the show everyone Sorry. thank you thank you so very very much for joining us today on the mymac.com podcast it is greatly greatly appreciated and uh this is already up on facebook so if you're listening to this if you go to the Mac to the Future page, I don't know if you can see it if you're not a member. Probably should have done it in on my own on my own page. Doesn't matter. It's already too late. Once this is all edited and done, I will put links to it uh, through the vertshark.com uh, website. Forgot to mention that, as a matter of fact. My, my the website I have is vertshark.com, where you can find all of the odds and all of the vids. Uh, there's also the YouTube channel, which you can like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. Over there on YouTube, it is the Vert Shark channel, where you'll not only get the MyMac.com podcast videos, you'll also get the Guys Daily Drive videos, where I drive in my, my car to work and talk about stuff. It's exciting stuff. It's great. But you can find those over at the Vert Shark channel. Like, share, subscribe to that. Uh, Carl, I think that this week... Mm -hmm. I think we were good enough. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think we were smart enough. What do you... you uh, 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 I, well, AI was. We weren't. So. Yeah, it, this was all artificially intelligent conversation. And we were actually following a complete script, including the jokes and everything else. We're just reading it off a piece of paper. And that doggone it. Gaz's amazing dog, Wilf. Wolf, 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 wolf. Wolf, wolf. Where is he? We don't know. You can't find him. People like us. Hmm. Now, guess, oh. why don't skeletons fight each other? I don't know. Because they don't have the guts. <laughs> good good dad joke. I like that. <laughs> and... Ah, uh -huh. oh, dear. <laughs> wow, this is going to be a long show. Hold on. Stop. Yeah. Save... Record. Ba, ba, ba. Okay. And for people that watch the video, now typically with the video, I don't include the after show at all, which is the part that we're in right now. And swears. I probably won't. I probably won't this time either. But if you watch the original, which is over there on the books of face, you can see it all. The setup, the anger, the tears, the whole the frustration. Truth. The horror. <laughs> but it was fun. This was this was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with this today. Mm -hmm. Um typically and you know, because Gaz and I have talked about like doing this kind of thing live. But I'm not always a good boy when it comes to to language. Well <laughs> Yeah, but hang on. I, I if it depends on your market, doesn't it? I mean you're you're uh, you're an adult podcast yes. about Mac and Max and stuff. I, I don't I don't think you've got a particularly young demographic listening to <laughs> possibly a few people out there. So well, who cares? I mean everybody swears. We're all grown up. That's true. I mean I say I say <sighs> bottom on occasion. You know, I know, but I just live on it. Um yeah. But I mean it's it's fun. It adds a dimension and it also allows feedback, you know, when you get people uh chiming in and stuff like this. Yeah. Um so you, you do get, like, instant feedback and stuff. They are saying, look, he doesn't care. Our, our viewer doesn't care. See? Yeah. So we could be... Don't care about mouth. what? having it, But what is it that he doesn't care about? 
Oh, that's do you true. not care be, about us doing it live, or do you don't live, care exactly. about yeah. us cursing? That's it. It's got to be one or the other. Plus, plus, doing it live would add a whole new dimension to messing your brain up on how to set it up each week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, actually, you know, and this is the language more more sausage making. Um, <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> so yeah. Well, Streamyard which is right. the program that I use to record the audio and that I, I bring in Gaz or I bring in you or I bring in whoever. Uh, and it's it's super simple software. Now, I'm, I've thought about using, there's another program that you can get like super geeky with and have like all kinds of custom screens and all that. And, you know, StreamYard lets you do some of that, but not to this extent. It's called EV Mux. Have you heard of this? No. You can do some amazing things when it comes to doing video, especially live video with this, with EV Mux, or if you just want to record it and then re- you know, edit it and release it separately. And there's a free version that only gives you a certain amount of time. Oh, for language. That's what he was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, wrong one. There we I go. Mean, you could do the same with Ecamm, Thank you, for Cletus. example. I mean, OBS, I Ecamm. don't like Ecamm. I've, I've on- tried using it. Is it, am I thinking the right thing? Hang on. <laughs> no, 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 no. That Ecamm will let you set up all kinds of things the same way, but I don't like the interface. It's like spread out all over the place, and it's it's hard to find. Whereas EV Mux gives you a column of the different kinds of things that you can that you can add. Um, I don't want to do it right now, but. If you and I, if you and I, or Gaz and I, or whoever, get together at some point in the future, I would love to to try using EV Mux because I've done a little bit by myself with it, but it does a lot of the same things that Streamyard does, where you can bring in other people's comments, you can have like separate screens, you can actually have like a live chat window. So all of this stuff that that you and I, see, <clears throat> excuse me, that you and I see. In the comments section for StreamYard, is not showing up on the screen, but with EV Mux, it would be live. It would be coming in live, and that's that's very very tempting. Um, hmm. But the thing is, I've already got a subscription to StreamYard, which costs me X number of dollars per week, and I don't know if I if I want to incur yet like another cost to because I, I don't make any money at this i don't think i don't think any of us really make much in a way of money on this uh i doubt i'm even i don't even think i'm making enough money to pay for all these services but i just enjoy doing it buy less mics <laughs> buy less mics yeah find um, one you like like this one um, yeah, exactly um but I, well, i'm looking at this one this ev mux thing it says 25 dollars a month for monthly payments which is about the same as Ecamm, I think, is. But um, they're professional one. Yeah. Well, maybe not, actually. It's a bit more expensive. But, I mean, looking at the free one, you get, like, two hours a month free streaming and stuff like this. So two hours, total 30 hours monthly. Stream up to two hours each live. Oh, each live one is two hours. Yeah. Okay. Um, blah, blah, blah. 1080p. Okay. Good. I mean, yeah, it seems um, okay. I mean, it's just all the, as you say, all the stuff that uh, uh, StreamYard does. But yeah, it's just a case of playing with it and, and setting it up and then leaving it alone, guy. I know what <laughs> I have no idea what you mean. So you can like add graphics and th- lower thirds and banners and you know, integrated chat. Yep, integrated chat is in there, as you say. Chat to your participants from the, any platform you're streaming to. If you require further integrations, please contact us. Blah blah blah. The what's what's the extra give you? No powered, ev- no power. So they stick their own logo on your streams, basically. Yes. Yes. Yeah. There's a uh, watermark. You, you get the full full pro scene builder if you pay up some money. Put your own logos, backgrounds, and overlays on. Do a slideshow, pre-record streams, unlimited streams. See, that's nothing. Well, you could pre-record stuff and put it out, but it's just the same as you do on YouTube at the moment. But it's the actual yeah. streaming thing. I think the, what moving forward is is because um, I watch a lot of. Uh, like movie related and geek related streams 
and they're they're good they're good fun and they swear on there all the time and yeah you know if, are they doing if, it live or are they recording it and then editing they're, they're, it and they're then, doing and it putting it out they're okay. doing it live because they're taking super chats and all kinds of weird stuff from from youtube <laughs> And, you know, the fact that these allow you to stream out to different locations at the same time, like it's got four, if you pay for it, four different destinations. So you can have like Twitch, you can have YouTube, you can have Facebook and another one, <laughs> whatever that yeah. may be. And it, it does add, it does add some um, like camaraderie between you and the viewers if if they can engage with you and you can instantly speak back to them or answer a question they may type in like... Um, like how our Facebook uh, viewer is doing at the moment, so yeah, yeah, it's 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 good. Um, and I would I would love to do live streaming things, but like I say, my guy the guys are a bit shy and they don't want to do do it, which is okay. And I've got res- I respect that, so that's fine. But uh, this is why I was looking at doing Steam Deck uh, reviews and stuff. So and my other mate, like Mark, he's got an idea for doing something because he used to have a, a YouTube channel. We still have to where he had an idea to do 10 to impress. So he, what he'd do is he'd buy Apple um, arcade games. Well, not buy them, but, you know, download them. And they'd, he'd have, they'd have 10 minutes to impress him. So he'd film himself and comment on it as he played it for 10 minutes. And, oh, that's cool. That's a good yeah, idea. But he stopped doing it for a while. And anyway, so I've said to him, now we've both got back into gaming and stuff using Steam. I said, just do it with Steam. Go and buy a two a £199 game a week download it play it for 10 minutes and put out the you know what happens. The review yeah, yeah. I, I think he's currently working on that you might have done it already actually so and and i wanted to do something similar for the steam deck i said i'll just take your idea rip it off totally and <laughs> <laughs> but on a steam deck but uh well yeah, one so- thing because i have i have two different computers here i've got the mac mini and i have a, a windows pc that i use basically just for gaming so if I had something like, uh, what is it called? Let's get one of them. Something like this, a capture card. That's what you need. No, I, I've got a capture card. I'm using oh, it for the, the Sony camera that I have yes. right here. Um, but th- there needs to be a way. I, I guess I could just get another one. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I and don't know if I could. Things like OBS. But the problem is, because we've got MacBook M1s, I think um, I know I can't have more than two screens running off my my laptop. I'm not sure if there's any such limitations on the the mini, but um, I think you can do up to four screens. But I mean, you... at, at some point, you've got all these different screens that you have to look at, and I don't know how well that would work out. But I've got a, a KVM switch for one of my monitors that I can go between the PC and my Mac Mini. Yeah. So I could have that screen doing the game so that I could be playing the game and then have all the recording stuff set up on the Mac. I just have to get the video from the PC into the Mac. Not so much that I would be watching it on the Mac to play because that kind of lag would just kill you every single time, but so that it could be, you know, both me. You just have a splitter. Or yeah. Hmm. So yeah. well, that's kind of what I'm what I've got right now I, with this little this little KVM switch that goes between the two computers to one monitor. So it's all of this stuff is doable, and it amazes yeah. me. It's all doable, and this this like things like Streamyard and and Efi e- e- Mux, these are kind of like the last obstacle because you get one you got to get your signal out there and then split off. I think Ecam was doing this thing originally where. They were allowing you to stream to various uh, destinations, but it was all going through your end. So you were sending out four different streams, yeah. which is no good if you're sending 1080p or even 4K in some instances. Out to you better have out, a big, big <laughs> pipe, big pipe amount yeah. of yeah, big pipe. But I think Streamyard and it looks like this one here as well. They do it. You only send out one stream to them, and then they fork it out to all the other services out there. Uh, as well as yeah. taking the feedback from those services and pulling it back to you or into one place, which can make it much more um, enjoyable and engaging and uh, yeah. spread your audience. Because some people don't want to be on Facebook, some people don't want to be on, I don't know, YouTube or and Twitter. Or if you, Twitter if you, if you, or if you pay for X, you can stream now like full length videos to to X as well, and it just appears. 
Yeah, that's great. Yeah. As, as well as um, TikTok, yep. oh, it's Pinterest. TikTok, yep. Well, TikTok's um, more short for more short form, isn't it? Yeah, but I you don't... can do you can do long stream live stuff on TikTok. Oh, okay. At I least don't I use think TikTok, you can. So I yeah, know. I you know I every once in a while I go over there and says, well, let's just see where this takes me. And like 15 minutes later, it's like, oh, I really didn't need to see that. But this, the, <laughs> so the I run away. The possibilities are endless. I mean, you can if you've got the time. Like I say, yeah. if, if things don't go well for me and my job, and we all end up. You know, you know, move out because they've moved up north somewhere. Then, fair enough. Um, I'm going to have much more time to do something um, creative. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, what's that? What's happened? <laughs> you got a little bubble next. Oh, I, I, I lifted, I lifted my, <laughs> my hand, I guess, to scratch, and it said, "Oh, you must be doing one of these." All oh, right. Or... Okay. That's weird. <laughs> Dear God. There's like all kinds of things that you can, you know, there's, uh, there's a, there's like a, a celebration one. And I don't remember how that one works. Two thumbs this up. is the hearts. I don't know. I don't know. And then you weird. got thumbs up. <laughs> it's triumphant. Not, see now, of course, that I'm talking about it, yeah, it's not doing it. That's how yeah. that's, that's but there's, there's doing other live. Yeah. Yeah. But so yeah, I mean, anyway, I think we're going to end the stream here over to uh, Mac to the Future. Uh, thanks to Cletus and, and uh, anyone who watches this later on, God help you. Uh, it, it's a super long way. We've been recording now on Facebook for almost two hours. So yeah, that's super, super long. We'll see. We'll see how well that works out. Uh, I will edit this down and have shorter versions of all of this that I will be putting out at various times, but I just want to say thank you. Thank you all for watching and listening to the mymac.com podcast. Thanks to Carl for coming on and uh, forgot to say this while, um, while we were recording. Thanks, Carl. Thanks for being on this week, Carl. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I got, I got so confused. Anyway, yeah, we're going to end the stream. He's not, so, he's not thank me. He's not thank me for the codes I sent you for Steam either yet, by the way. Just, oh, no, I did. I did thank you. <laughs> I think. Didn't I? I don't know. I'm confused. <laughs> I'm so confused. All right, we're going to go. Bye, guys, over there Bye. on the Facebooks. We appreciate it. Bye.